Vivian Har, age 9. On May 5, 2012, I saw a picture of two child slaves with big rocks strapped across their little heads. To feel better, they were holding hands. I was terrified. Not by them, because they are just like me, but by the lives they live. It hurt my heart. I decided to make a stand and sell my clean, pristine lemonade every day, rain or shine, to end child slavery. My goal is to raise enough money to free 500 child slaves. Now most children, by the time they would have gotten out of that photo gallery into the car, they would have forgotten about that goal, but not Vivian. She really did sit outside and raise money for 365 days. She started by selling her lemonade for $2 a cup. But then she realized that because she was fighting against slavery and children being sold into slavery, that she shouldn't sell her lemonade, but to simply ask for what was in the other people's hearts. She started getting five, 10, 20, 50, 100 dollars a cup for her lemonade to help her in her cause. One day, her father even said that she was sick in bed all day, and at nine o'clock at night, her parents were out on a date and she's she called them and said, I didn't make a stand today. They had to cut their date short and come home so they could drag her lemonade stand out so that she could make her stand so that she wouldn't miss a day. After a few months, about a year, she was able to meet her goal of raising enough money to free 500 slaves, which is $150,000 by selling her lemonade. When she finished, when she met that goal, her parents, who have been supportive the whole time, very supportive, <laughs> said, all right, congratulations, you did it. What's next? You know, can we move on kind of thing? And she said, my job is not done. There are still slaves to be free. So now it's been about a year and a half. They've shut down the lemonade stand and created a business, or what she calls a giveness. They've bottled her lemonade, and they are selling it in stores all over the Bay Area, Sonoma County, Washington, with plans to expand. Her goal for this year is to sell one million bottles of lemonade. She's unstoppable. She said, when I first thought of doing this, I didn't think of all the excuses why I couldn't. I thought of all the reasons why I must. So Vivian is fearless. She's confident. She believes 100% in her vision and her goal. The vision of a child, right? The beliefs of a child. We're born clean slates. But as we grow up, we start to develop beliefs and thoughts about ourselves that limit us. We develop limiting beliefs. We have that gremlin that starts coming into our head, telling us we can't do things. Right? And we lose confidence as we grow up. We develop those fears that keep us from moving forward. So today I'm going to teach you about blocks. How to identify your blocks and your fears and to break through them into confidence. And to remind you that it's not about all those things that you're doing in, the biz in your business, all that busy work. Like a list is. <laughs> busy, busy work. <laughs> But it's about the thoughts that you think that are going to create your success. Okay? So I'll teach, I'm going to teach a lot more about thoughts and how they create your success in my mindset event on October 4th. So I'm going to go through a lot of stuff today. I'm going to go pretty quickly through some things. But like I said, I'm going to go more in depth at my event. So before I jump into the content, I want to tell you a little bit about me and my background and how I got to where I am. My life is pretty awesome right now. I get to empower women, get to work with women who are just starting out in their business who aren't quite feeling confident yet. I get to lift them up and empower them and help them feel more confident, help them step past their fears out of their comfort zone. It's pretty awesome. But life hasn't always been this way. As a child, I was very shy. And I knew I had a fire in my belly. I knew that I had been put on this planet to make a difference but I was shy. 
that was a big problem. If you don't want to talk to other people, it's kind of hard to make a big difference. <laughs> and so, as I grew up, I went to college, I got my psychology degree, and I started to work in a group home with foster kids. And this, I loved this job, I was making a difference, I felt like, um, you know, I really loved the kids, but I wasn't feeling like I was fulfilled. I knew there was something more. But besides that, they literally paid me in peanuts, and my landlord didn't really like that. <laughs> um, so, in 2008, I decided that I was going to start a network marketing company, or a business, my own business, with a network marketing company. And being a shy person, that was pretty tough. That was a big leap. And not only was it network marketing, but it was passion parties. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know what passion parties is, selling romance enhancers. Okay, we'll just put it that way. Nice. So, for a, so for a shy girl to start a business was one thing, but to start selling things that went buzz in the night, talking in front of a ton of women, was like, whoa, big deal. But it was, when, when I took that leap and started that business, I met a woman named Kim. And she was my first life coach. And she taught me that I could create my reality. That I could choose what life I have. That I could choose my thoughts. That I didn't have to be miserable. And so that's when I really decided and realized that coaching was for me. That that is what was going to take me to where I wanted to be and to help change the world. So I had fears. I was very low in confidence at that point. Okay, I was shaking before my first party, and it was a bunch of my friends in the room I had to have a glass of wine before because I was so nervous. But I did it. And the more I did it, the more comfortable I got, and the more confidence I gained. And eventually, I was able to get my certification as a coach and go back to school and become a coach. And now I'm a speaker, I'm a trainer, I'm doing all these things. Wow. So it was more important to me to step past my fears, to be really, really scared, but to do it anyway, to step out of my comfort zone, to be able to create the life that I desire, to be able to make that difference that I wanted to make in the world. So if we're born clean slates and full of confidence, with no fears, what happens to us as we grow up? We start to see fear instead of faith, and obstacles instead of opportunity. So what happens? As we grow up, we start to hear and we see things from our parents, our teachers. Um, we start to develop beliefs about ourselves, and our abilities, and the world. Our experiences shape us, the things that happen to us on the playground, right? They teach us these lessons that we can't do that. We're not good enough for that. Our parents are trying to keep us safe, and so they tell us, don't touch that top. It scares us. Right? They say, that's too much work. Maybe next year you'll be prepared for that. But maybe not now. That's too much work. That's not really feasible. And so we learn these things, and it creates fear for us. It takes away our confidence. It keeps us safe in our comfort zone. And we take these things to adulthood, and as adults, we start to say, I can't do that. That's too much work. That's impossible. But what if we told ourselves we can do it, that we are capable, and that we can make the difference that we want to make? So I, I challenge you to challenge your thoughts. When you hear yourself saying, I can't do something, ask yourself, what if I can do that? Vivian doesn't have anyone in her life telling her she can't do it. So she's going for it. She's changing the world. She really is. I believe she's, she's raised over $300,000 now. Wow. So did you know that we have over 50,000 thoughts every single day? And that on average, 80% of those thoughts are negative? These negative thoughts, any of our thoughts, control our behavior, our physiology, our motivation. But when they're negative, we start to lack motivation. We start to get sick. 
we can actually cause sickness and disease for ourselves if we hold on to enough negative thoughts. And I'll talk about this a little bit more in my event, but we have two, two pieces to our mind. We have the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. The conscious mind is our thinking mind. It's the mind that says, what am I going to have for lunch today? If I take out the trash this morning, I have to remember to do the laundry tomorrow. <laughs> it's that mind that chatters at us all day long. <laughs> and then we have the unconscious mind, where there's no filter. It believes everything we say. So if we're, if we're feeding it all sorts of positive thoughts, yeah, I can do that. It's going to believe it. Okay. If we're feeding it all sorts of negative thoughts, it's going to believe it. So the conscious mind has the filter. So whatever gets past our unconscious mind or our conscious mind goes into our unconscious mind. So again, if we're having negative thoughts, they're going to get past that conscious mind and into our unconscious. And it's going to perpetuate those negative beliefs about ourselves. The unconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and imagined. And I'll give you a couple of examples of that soon. 95% of our waking moments are spent doing unconscious activities. Brushing our teeth is unconscious. Driving. You know, have you ever gotten someplace and you're like, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't even know how I got home today, but I made it, so I must, must have done something, right? That All those things, walking, all that stuff is unconscious. I've learned it. So if 95% of our waking moments are spent unconscious, that means that we're having the same thoughts as yesterday and the day before and the day before that, perpetuating those unsupportive beliefs that we've had our whole life. So our thoughts will literally create our success or our failure. Who has known someone who's like super negative or complains all the time. Oh, yeah. sure everyone can identify at least one person, maybe on their Facebook page, who's oh, yeah. constant <laughs> negative, constant complaining, right? <laughs> oh my god, my car broke down today on the way to work, and then I got to work finally and I got fired, and then, you know, two weeks later, I have to move on to my place because I can't pay the bills because I lost my job and no one wants to, right? We all know those people. They're con it's a constant snowball of something wrong in their life. But then on the other hand, we probably all know the super positive people who are super successful. They have amazing relationships. Great husband or wife. They have great friendships. Everything goes super well for them. And when something does go wrong, do we hear them complain about it? Okay. It's all about the mindset. So a couple quick stories to, to illustrate how par powerful the mind is. The first one took place probably a well, long, long time ago when the, box, the railroad cars were still going and it was a big industry. And a man named Nick Sitzman worked for the refrigerated box car company. And one day towards the end of his work, he went into the freezer unit to check on something and he got locked in. Now he knew that pretty much everyone had gone home and so he started to panic. And he was banging on the doors and screaming and you know, yelling for people to let him out, but everyone had left. So he started to really panic. He knew that it had to be about zero degrees in there and that if he didn't get out, he would die. And so he started etching on the floor things like, I'm getting numb, I'm getting cold. And the next morning when the crew came back, they found him dead. Now every single sign of the autopsy revealed that he had frozen to death. But upon inspection of the unit, the actual thermostat was broken. And it was actually 55 degrees in that room. He had killed himself by the power of his own thoughts. Yeah. So the next story. The next story is about a man you all know, Jim Carrey. Anybody not know who Jim Carrey is? <laughs> okay, good. So back in 1990, Jim Carrey was really struggling with his career. It wasn't taking off like he had wanted it to. And he, one day he drove up to Mulholland Drive in LA and he was looking out over the Hollywood sign and he was contemplating things and he's, what am I gonna do? If this, you know, he's really struggling. And so he pulled out his checkbook and he wrote himself a check post-dated for five years from then, so 1995. And he wrote it for $10 million with the 
memo for acting services rendered. He carried that check within his wallet for that the next five years. And by 1995, when he had written the check for, he had done Ace Ventura, The Mask, and Dumb and Dumber, each one bringing him $20 million. So that's the opposite of the Nick Sitzman, right? The power of the thoughts. Has anyone ever had a light bulb moment when you realized, oh my god, I totally made that happen by the power of my thoughts? Anyone? Anyone want to share their experience? Of, I created that. I totally created that. On <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, somebody was talking with me about the power of my thoughts, and I started to really get it because last week I had an experience with my cat where I had to take her to the vet, and I was kind of freaking out. So a good friend of mine and another good friend of mine, who's also right here, helped me through it. And so I started creating this like energy ball every morning, and in that energy ball, I would put you know health and wellness for my cat, and then you know more clients calling me about my candles and wholesale clients. So one person that I've been working with for over a year called me today, and I was like, wow. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so this is going to be my day, and I just kept putting that in my day, and it really works. Wow, awesome. Thank you. Anybody else want to share an experience you've had? I always find hard. I always believe when I find it, it's like it's not like you did. So I like right to my stuff. And my stuff does the same way every are, time. <laughs> yeah, I've been over a room with the car with somebody else, and I'm never going to find parking. Very right? good. And they were like, I was for 30 minutes finding parking. Yeah. And then you get there, so. Yeah, yeah. She was, I don't know if everybody heard her, but she was talking about she always finds parking wherever she goes because she believes she's always going to find it. Yeah. I've, had, I've had experiences where I, I was thinking about how I needed to call somebody and then they call me. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm sure most of the people in this room have had that experience yeah. where you're like thinking about something and they just pop up into your life all of a sudden. Yeah. So we really do create our own reality. So I want to talk to you about blocks. Today. Things that block us from our success. They're like a brick wall. They stop us dead in our tracks and it robs us of our confidence. So these blocks are our gremlin or our inner critic, okay? Our limiting beliefs and interpretations. So I'm going to talk about the gremlin first or our inner critic. The gremlin I'm talking about is not the cute little furry brown and white guy from the movie, <laughs> but he's that nasty, like teeth barred, drooling, ugly, looming voice in your head that tells you you're not good enough, you're not pretty enough, you really need to lose weight, um, you're never going to be successful. How do you think that you're going to be successful when there's a million other people doing what you do? It's that nasty voice that just tears you down, it beats you up. It's almost like you're going to have boxing gloves on. It's like, oh, you think you're going to do that? Oh, you're going to do that? And it just knocks you down every time. So <clears throat> this gremlin is driven by fear. When we start to have fear, our gremlin comes up and knocks us down so that we don't step out of our comfort zone. So every single person has a gremlin, which I know it was a relief for me when I found that out because I was like, whew, I'm not crazy. <laughs> so every single person has a gremlin, and the question is not whether we have one or not, but how loud does it yell at us? Okay, so some of us have gremlins that come up and we're like, oh, you good, but thank you. And we just kind of tell it to go away. Others of us, it just knocks us down for a long time. So it's important to recognize your gremlin and realize the times that it's yelling at you and to be able to shut it down as best you can. So in order to do that, you have to give yourself a lot of self-love and be aware of these gremlins. So I know for me, as soon as I was aware uh, that I had a gremlin, for one thing, and what it said to me, as soon as I knew all those messages that it was sending me, I was able to recognize them because I was aware of them and I was able to shut them down. So what you do, you want to give yourself a lot of self-love. You recognize the gremlin and then you can actually name it too to lessen its power. Although when I'm telling you to name it, I'm not telling you to name it after your ex-husband or your mother-in-law, okay? We don't want to name it after someone that is in your life that triggers you. So name it like crazy lady or something. <laughs> um, so you want to recognize that it's there, be aware of it, name it, and it will lessen the power. And then when you hear the gremlin come up, say something like, thank you for caring. What is your fear right now? Ask yourself, what's the fear? And ask, how will this serve me? 
because asking yourself these questions is going to help take that gremlin away. I go into this a lot more in depth at my Mindset Mastery event. I'm going to be teaching five steps to tra transforming your inner critic and your inner coach. <coughs> so limiting beliefs are obviously something that limit you, at least that limits you. It's going to limit your success. It's going to take away that success from you. And it's a belief that we accept about our life, about ourselves, about the world, about the people in it. Okay, if you, if you believe that everyone's out to get you, what are you going to attract to yourself? Everyone that's out to get you, right? <laughs> so, you, it, this really turns down your light. So it's really critical to move past these limiting beliefs, to realize that it is a limiting belief, that it's not necessarily the truth of the world, but it's just your own thought to move past it. So I have an example of a limiting belief. So when elephants are babies and they're in, they're being trained, they're actually confined by a rope around their leg. This keeps them in a certain zone, in their comfort zone, we'll call it. And as babies, when they're tied up with that rope, they try to get out and they can't because they're not big enough to get out of that rope. But when they grow up and they're a five ton huge elephant, they can easily break that rope but they no longer try because they were trained at birth that they couldn't do it. So this translates to us too. We learn as little children or as teenagers that we can't do something. And so later in life when we are perfectly capable, we don't even try. So some examples of limiting beliefs would be, women can't do that. I don't deserve it. You can't ri get rich by doing what you love. Or rich people are greedy. How many people have heard that one? <laughs> Everyone, right? So it's all a belief. It's not the truth, but it's true for you. These, tr tr these um, beliefs are true for you. So when you're feeling blocked by limiting belief, when you hear yourself go, oh my God, that's, that's totally a limiting belief that I have right now. Ask yourself, how true is that belief? Is that really true? The truth? Where did I get that belief from? Did I get it from my grandma, my dad, mom, sister? How has this belief affected me in my life? Do you believe women aren't supposed to own businesses? Or women aren't supposed to be rich? Or whatever that belief is? How is that holding you back? So notice when you're having those thoughts. And how can I let this belief go, or how can I shift the belief? <laughs> so one thing, you, one thing you can do to turn around your, your uh, beliefs is to create a turnaround statement. So what that is, is when, you're, when you notice you have a negative belief, you turn it around to something positive. So for example, if I express my true feelings, people will think that I am weak, and they will take advantage of me. That would be a negative limiting belief. The turnaround statement would be, the more I express my true feelings, the more people love, respect, and support me. Okay? Another one could be, this probably goes for a lot of women in the room, it's not okay to focus on my own needs. <laughs> Ladies? Turnaround would be, my needs are just as important as anyone else's. And that's a true story. So we're never, ever, ever stuck. We think we are because we keep having those same beliefs, but we need to switch them. When we notice them, switch them. Become aware. We must flood our unconscious with a new way of thinking to change our beliefs, just like we were programmed in the first place. Like when we were little kids, we're programmed. You know, I have a friend whose grandmother always told her, don't beat the boys when she was little. And so she had that belief she couldn't beat the boys. <laughs> but she turned it around, let me tell you. So we always need to, you know, she had that, that belief when she was little because she was flooded with that. And so she turned it around by flooding her unconscious with new beliefs. I'm also going to teach a four-step process to turn limiting beliefs into empowering ones at my event. Interpretations. These are an opinion about an event or a situation or people or experiences that you've had in the past that you believe to be true. Although usually it's a made up story in your mind based on experiences that you've had in your life. I'm sure you've all heard the expression like energy attracts like energy. Right? 
we create our reality. <coughs> so hold good expectations for yourself, for your life, for your business. So we, we carry around these filters with us based on our, our experiences in life. <coughs> and it's like wearing colored glasses. You all, I'm sure you all have tried on, you know, like different colored lens glasses, the red lenses, or the green lenses, or the blue. So these interpretations are like wearing a filter, a certain colored lens on your glasses. So based on what color the lens is, is how we see our reality. So if you're hanging out with someone with the red glasses on, and you have blue, you go, no, that's not green, <laughs> right? Everybody has a different interpretation based on the lenses that we're wearing, based on our experiences that we've had in our life. And it really, really, really impacts how we show up in the world, how we do our businesses, how we run our life. Anais Nin says, we do not see the world that it, as it is, we see it as we are. So when you find yourself interpreting things a certain way, ask yourself, what's another way that I can look at that? What would someone else say about that? Like a partner or a friend? What would someone with the complete opposite point of view say about that? Challenge yourself. Constantly challenge your interpretations and your beliefs. So I'm going to do a quick little experiment with all of them. So I want you to close your eyes. And imagine that you're in your kitchen and you're hungry. So you go to the fridge and you open it up. And you see a big, plump, juicy lemon. You reach for it and pick it up. It's big and round and really juicy. You set this lemon on the counter and you grab a sharp knife. You slowly slice through it, cutting a wedge. You pick up the wedge, smell it, put it to your mouth, and take a big bite. <coughs> it's so sour. Your mouth puckers, and you make a sour lemon face. You swallow the juice, and now open your eyes. Who wants to tell me what happened inside your mouth? when you're imagining fighting into that lemon. It gets pretty soggy. <laughs> what? Soggy. It gets pretty soggy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you say something? It was watery. Yeah. Your mouth, was your mouth watery? <coughs> That's the power of our thoughts. You can just think about a lemon, or a, when you think about maybe it's a big steak, or you know something that you really love, your mouth starts to water. My mouth starts to water when I just breathe this thing. <laughs> so again, I'm drilling this into you guys, but I really want you to take away that your mind is incredibly powerful. It can be your success partner, your friend, or your enemy. Okay, it really can. So three steps to making change. Okay. Number one, pay attention to your thoughts. And, and pay attention to whether your thoughts are matching what's happening in your life. For example, if you're running a, if you have a network marketing business and you have a team, are you thinking how awesome your team is? Or are you thinking, God, I wish my team did more. <laughs> Only like two people work. What's wrong with them? <laughs> right? Pay attention to your thoughts. What are you telling yourself? Are you telling yourself you're so busy? You're so stressed out. You're so tired all the time. You're so overwhelmed. Nobody wants to buy your services. Nobody has the money. It's all because of the economy. Anyone guilty of that? No? Okay. <laughs> Be aware of your thoughts and notice the life evidence that's coming at you because of your thoughts. And pay attention to others, too. Like I mentioned the, those complainers earlier. Pay attention to other people in your life and notice what's going on in their life and what's coming out of their mouth. Best you, it's the same stuff. So make a conscious effort to pay attention to your thoughts, but don't judge them. Just notice them and shift the thought. Because when we judge our thoughts or ourselves, it takes us down. We want to lift ourselves up. 
Number two, decide to change. We can't change the future with the same thoughts that created our present. We can't get rich by telling ourselves that we're broke. We can't become successful if we keep talking about all those obstacles in our way. Focus on what you want. We must create new beliefs. And that's step number three, create new beliefs. We've got to feed our brains new thoughts. And how we do this is through affirmations or mantras, same thing, positive thinking. All these things interrupt our negative old patterns of thinking to shift our thoughts into new thoughts, into new processes. These mantras and positive thinking, they reprogram our unconscious the same way it was programmed in the first place, by right? repetition and emotion. Okay, remember the, don't touch that, it's hot. Don't touch that, it's hot. That's emotional because it creates fear for us. And we, it keeps repeating. So we, that's how we, um, we create our beliefs in the first place. So we need to teach them by constantly going through new beliefs. And remember, the unconscious doesn't, doesn't know the difference between what's real and imagined. Every thought is accepted as fact by the unconscious. So whatever you're telling yourself, the unconscious is going to believe you. It's like your best friend. Okay, I got it. I believe you. Wayne Dyer says, change the way you look at things, and the things you look at change. So are your thoughts supporting your success? Or killing it? It's all up to you. When you're purpose-driven and unafraid, you are unstoppable. So I have a special offer for you tonight. First, I want to share a couple of stories. Oops. Uh, oh, I didn't put them in there. Oh, no. Okay. Anyways, I'll skip that part. Okay. So I have, uh, you heard me talk about my Mindset Mastery event tonight. This is taking place October 4th across the street at the Double Tree. It's from 10 to 5, all day event. And this event is going to teach you the number one most important thing to make you thrive in your business. It's going to teach you how to let go of your fear and run your business with confidence. How to create a compelling vision to propel you forward in your business. And how to kick that gremlin to the curb. Let's get it out of there. We don't need that thing. You will walk away with broken down goals and mantras to propel you forward in your business. You will have less fear, more confidence, and you will be ready to rock and roll in your business. And of course, the bonus for the day is hanging out with me. <laughs> You'll also get to make new friends and potential business partners. Maybe you'll even walk away with some referral partners from the day to support you in your business. This event is valued at $4.97 because of all the value and transformation involved. But I want to make it accessible to everyone who really wants and needs the training. <coughs> so I'm offering it at $97. But wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> who saw that one coming? <laughs> Tonight, in the room, I want to make a really, really special offer for you because I love the GNA. You guys are all awesome. Tonight, I'm offering the tickets two for one. So you get two tickets for the price of one. But wait, <laughs> there's more. For the first seven people who sign up with me tonight for the event, you will get a one-on-one -on -one session, complimentary, with me for an hour. It's one hour of my time valued at $200, complimentary, when you sign up for the event. So the one-on-one -on -one time is designed to, hear, to help you break through your blocks, to get crystal clear on your dreams and desires, and to teach you some tools to run your business. So, to recap, tonight only, you will get my full day Mindset Mastery event, two for one tickets, because the value is $4.97 for one, the value for two is almost $1,000. One on one complimentary confidence breakthrough session with me valued at $200. Total value of almost $1,200. Tonight only. $97. Woo! <laughs> 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 awesome or what? Yeah. So, um, oh yeah. 
So if we were ready to stop living in fear, to get rid of those gremlins, to have more confidence, and to make your business thrive, make it prosperous, come talk to me, okay? I will, you guys have the sales sheets? So they have, they have sales sheets right there. You can fill them out and bring them to me. You don't have to put your credit card information on it. I have a little swiper. So at the end of the meeting, if you want to come to my event, if you want to buy tickets, you can come and talk to me. If you have questions, you can come talk to me. Um, and like I said, two tickets for the price of one. So if you want to bring a friend, you can split the cost or you can gift them the event. So anyone have any questions about anything? No, you guys are awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.